Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Let us call the service to order. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we stand before your throne of grace, just giving thanks for another day. Father, that we um, glorify your name, for this truly is the day that you have made. We're determined to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for waking us to another day. We thank you for bringing here for such a time as this. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Lord, we just thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for vitality. We thank you for your divine provision that there's food in the fridge and clothes on our back. We thank you for this beautiful day, Father, Lord. Oh, Father, we just thank you that you're a God that is in the midst of everything we do. You are Emmanuel, God with us, and you never leave us nor forsake us, that nothing can separate us from your love. So we just, as we go forth today, Lord, we just give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Lord, before we ask for anything, we give thanks for everything. Amen. Everything, Father, Lord. We thank you for the good days and the not so good days because even even what we think are our bad days are good because of you lord Amen. so we just thank you we thank you that you um made a way made a way through our lord and savior jesus christ made a way by his stripes we are healed made a way that he paid the price we couldn't pay settled the debt we couldn't settle we thank you for jesus this morning lord that at the name of jesus every knee must bow and every tongue must confess we thank you that we serve a risen Savior that loved us so much that while we were still dead in our sins, he died for us. So, Father, as we lift up this service to you, we pray that it would be pleasing to you, that it would be a fragrant aroma. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. And as we usher into this worship, we just glorify your name and say, we worship you. Hallelujah. You get the highest praise, Lord. Amen. 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 Stand if you are able. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Come on, keep it going. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. and sisters that have fallen due to COVID and many other reasons. Um, so we always want to be mindful that um, there's those that are enduring this COVID crisis a lot more than difficult than what, we have, than what we have. You know, we know folks have lost their jobs. We know folks have lost loved ones. We know it's impacted us in a number of ways. Furlough, but God. But God. but God, amen, but God, so Lord, I just thank you, I thank you for who you are, I thank you that you reveal more and more of yourself to me every day, your word tells us to seek, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness in all things, he didn't say some of the things, he didn't say most of the things, but he said all things would be added unto us. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Father, Lord, take the blinds off of our eyes. Put the ointment on our eyes, even as Jesus did with the blind man. That, you know, as he did it the first time, he started seeing figures. And as he did it the second time, put the, the ointment from the mud in his, in his spit, the word tells us, in the, that he rubbed it on and he had clear sight. That we might see you that clearly, Lord. That we might have our focus on you, that our eyes would be fixed on you and that you would be in the center of everything we do. It's that that we pray now and forevermore in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior, our King, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. And God's people Amen. said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah means the highest praise. You may be seated in the house. I like those melanin. What is that melanin T-shirt? Those are fly. Amen. I like that. <laughs> Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
And good morning. There goes our bird. It loves you. It loves you. I think, yeah, I think the bird loves the praise. We need to, we need to have him come work, um, join us in worship. Hear the bird singing. Amen. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank you. Well, it's so good to see you all this morning. This Sunday morning, August 2nd. Amen. As my sister w w reminded me yesterday, we're in August now. What did you say? More than half the year is done. We, you know, we're here in another day. It's August 2nd. But what we do on the first Sunday of every month is we commune and we celebrate communion. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I mean, communion obviously deals with community and it deals with uh, and unity, right? Commu communion. So we come together. Pastor Ingrid, please. Amen. So we come together um, in a spirit of peace and a spirit of love and a spirit of unity coming together to acknowledge the finished work that Christ did on the cross. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So let me tell you, I think it's important, you know, because a lot of times churches, you know, and, 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 and different religions, we do things out of tradition. And people oftentimes don't know why they did it. Amen? But I, I think it's important to talk about um, why we pass out, why we take communion. And I really want to talk about three areas that we focus on while we take communion. Amen? The first being, it's a time of celebration. Amen? A time that we can acknowledge that Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, paid the price we couldn't be, couldn't pay. He sh shed his blood on the cross for you and for me. While we were still dead in our sins, he died for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. And because of his precious blood, that paid the price to the Father in heaven, you know, a perfect God, and tore the veil, separating a sinful humanity from a perfect, holy, and divine God. So, because he settled that debt, we can now enter into the Holy of Holies, into that intimate place with God the Father again, and as, as long as we walk in faith in Jesus, amen? So it's a time of celebration, because we have the gift through Jesus' death, our sins are atoned for, through his resurrection, through his resurrection, three days later, with all power in his hands, we have the gift of eternal life. The gift of salvation. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That means we have the hope of glory. Amen. That when we breathe, this last is, when we um, are in faith and belief in Jesus Christ and led by the Spirit in Him, that we know that we're going to a better place. Amen. Hopefully to have a reunion with a lot of the loved ones that have gone before us. Amen. The second thing that we should do during communion is a time where we assess. It's a time where we assess not on um, our lives. How are we walking? Are we growing in Christ? Are we walking in, in faith? Uh, are we walking in obedience to the word? David, the shepherd boy, and then became king. He said, thy commandments will I keep in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So he not only, they, they didn't have the book like we had back in the day, but it's important as much as we have this book, that we not only read this book, study this book, and, um, and live what we read in this book so that it will be forever etched in our hearts, that we may not sin against God. So how, how, when you look at the person in the mirror, how are you measuring up? Are you, are you in prayer every day? Are you getting into that intimate place with God on a daily basis? Are you seeking his face through the knowledge of his word where he tries to reveal more of himself, his divine nature and his eternal power to us? Amen? Amen. Because if you know like I know, the more you know about the Lord, the more you love him. Amen. 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 And then the last thing, as I mentioned to you, as a body of believers, we are the body, Christ is the head. Amen. And we come together in a spirit of love in a spirit of peace, and a spirit of unity, just giving thanks. And, and, and Jesus has commissioned us to go into all the world 
and to make disciples of all nations. You know, and, 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 and um, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Teaching everything that Jesus had taught. So we're to be witnesses. Witnesses in all the earth of the gospel, the good news of what Jesus did on the cross. How you doing? You want to come up here with me? Bird is always here. <laughs> Every Sunday. Yes. There's a holy bird. I'm a <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. So um, as we prepare for communion, I just want to remind everybody it's a time of celebration. It's a time where we assess in the spirit of continuing to grow and walk in the things of God, putting away the, our past past sins and moving as new create creatures in Christ, amen? amen? And then understanding that there's not to be divisions amongst us, but we're to walk in that love and peace, and I'll read this to you in a second. Are you going to... Uh, I have yours up there. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. I think I can handle this thing. I think so, too. I'll put on my glasses. I'm just so used to you standing next to me, baby. All right. I'm just next to me. <laughs> I need my good, strong woman next to me. Y'all. <laughs> you know, Linus had his blanket. I need my ink. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, can we can we stand? Please, everyone stand as we get ready to partake of the sacraments. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul talks about a time where uh, there were divisions in the church. The rich were making fun of the poor, the poor were making, you know, were, uh, had disdain and contempt for the rich as a result um, of, of hypocrisy and things like that. And people were coming in to take the sacraments or partake of this communion drunk and defile it and just not um, showing the reverence of the sacred, you know, sacrament that it is of what Christ did on the cross for us. Amen? Amen. So, in 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul is speaking of correcting an abuse of the Lord's Supper. And it reads, is everyone, are we, are we all set? Yeah. 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 Okay. And, um, and it reads, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. Let us take our bread. <clears throat> and when he had given thanks, let us give thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the finished work of Jesus on the cross. He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us partake. Yes. Praise God from who all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Amen. You may, you may be seated. Amen. Amen. 
It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's not too hot. I know y'all are in the shade, but y'all know this is your first time to see me, and I look forward to meeting you at the service. But normally that sun's beaming down on my head. Uh, that glare that you see over my head, it's not because I'm an angel. <laughs> Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Well, as you all know, that we are a Bible-believing, Bible-studying and showing ourselves approved church. Amen? Amen. Y'all reading your Bibles every day? Amen. I pray. Take five minutes, Amen. take ten minutes, and build up. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's important. The, what that says that, that this, I'll, I'll tell you three things that it says about the Word, the Word of God. First of all, Jesus said that the Word is our daily bread. So it feeds our spirit. Amen. As much as we need to, you know, feed our bodies, I feed my spirit. Amen. So it's important that we're reading the word of God. This is, you know, for those that have played sports, or I like to draw the analogy, this is my playbook. Amen. Does you know, ask if anybody needs a Bible. Does anybody need a Bible? Everybody else? Okay. Amen. Praise God. We're going to make sure everyone has a Bible. But it also says that in, in, in the book of Psalms, 119, 105, I mean, that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I mean, meaning his word guides us. Guides us in the truth, guides us in righteousness of what God intended us to have. And then the word tells us in Romans I believe it's 1017. It says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So you hear the word of God when you're reading the word, that's hearing it because you're meditating on it. And so faith. We know that without faith, you can't please God. Just like we use dollars in the United States to purchase and things, faith is the currency in heaven. Amen. 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 Bring Amen. it. Amen. So as we grow in faith, the blessings flow. Y'all want to be big ballers? No. Shot ballers. <laughs> be big on faith. Be Amen. big on faith. Amen. Faith in heaven. I'm talking about for God. Amen. I'm not talking about as the world. These are the big ballers. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. So ACC, you know what we do. Let's raise our Bibles in the air and wave them like you just don't care. If you know the Holy Ghost is up in this place, somebody say, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So let's repeat this confession after me. This is my Bible. This, this is, is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I believe my Bible. I believe my Bible. To be the God breathed. To be the God breathed. Inspired word. Inspired word. Of our Father in heaven. Of our Father in heaven. Leading us out of the darkness. Leading us out of the darkness. Into his glorious light. Into his glorious light. Freeing us from the bondage. Freeing us from the bondage. Of sin and death. Of sin and death. Into the glory. Into the glory. Of eternal life. Of eternal life. With our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, therefore, I walk in expectation. I walk in expectation of changing the world. Of changing the world through the renewal of my mind. The renewal of my mind through the purification of my heart. Through the purification of my heart and overcoming the schemes of the enemy. And overcoming the schemes of the enemy with truth. With truth. With faith. With faith. With love. With love. Forcefully advancing. Forcefully advancing God's kingdom, God's kingdom on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. If you believe that with every breath in your body, then somebody say amen. 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 If you declare and decree it, then somebody say hallelujah. 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 Praise God from who all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Father's call, our Father in heaven is calling us to be his ambassadors on earth. 
He's calling us to be world changers. And I'm here to remind you that either you're changing the world or you're being changed by the world. Amen. You see, because changing the world is, a, is, is not passive. It's aggressive. We got to be of those that when we see injustice, we speak out. We got to be of those that when we see somebody less fortunate, that we in love offer what we can to them. It may not always be money, because Peter and, and John, we remember at the gate beautiful, he said, silver and gold have I none. But what I do have, I give to you. And we know that he grabbed the hand of the, the lame beggar and said, stand up and walk. And that man's life was forever changed. Amen. Amen. Not only because he was physically healed, because, but because then he followed them in faith. So he sealed his eternity. Amen. Amen. He believed. Amen. We have to be world changers. We have to change our families in terms of the financial. Thank you, my Eva. Thank you so much. Always thinking. I, lo I love you. I know. Eva. I know. It's always. <laughs> Praise God. Um, we, have to, we, we have to remind that we can change, be the world changers in our, in our families. Amen. 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 Changing from a, from a place, some of us. You know, our generations removed from slavery, but poverty still exists in our families. Mm -hmm. How is that? Right? So we need to be world changers and thinking ahead. How are we going to change the next generation? Build wealth so that we can influence change. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm here to tell you, we're going to get rid of that stinking thinking and start thinking as God has called us to. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Well, God has given me a word for you this morning, and I have to be honest with you. You know, this week I was like, Lord, you know, I'm so busy because I'm preparing for the class that we're going to teach, and I'll tell you more about that later. But I'm studying the word. I'm studying Christ. I'm going deeper. God told me weeks ago that I need to go back to the foundation. Amen? Amen. You know, because there's too many of us, although I'm happy for all of you all that are here, and amen, this is beautiful, and I understand the social distancing. There's too many people at home. Amen. Or not amen. tuning in. Amen. Or not on the Bible studies. Amen. Or whatever. They have fallen back into a place of, you know, how are you being fed daily? Amen. Amen. Are you in depression? Are you staying connected to Christ? Amen. You know? Amen. And as a pastor, you know, I have to stand before God one day and be accountable. Amen. And I want to I want to be able to lay prostrate. I know I'm not going to stand before him. I'm going to lay at his mercy and say, Lord, I did my best. I, I, I did my best. I tried to teach every day. I did more did the, the, this and what have you. You know, so praise God. I, I, you know, I, I take that seriously. I take that seriously, the fact that I have to get up here every week and have a word that I pray blesses you, a word that equips you to go out into the world and to be better equipped for the enemy and the battles that we're going to face on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. That is important that we put on the armor of God each Amen. and every day. I feel God's air conditioning right now. Woo, and it feels good. Amen. Yes. Praise God. That feels good. Yes. So if you could turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 14. Amen. This is a story that you may have heard before. But you're going to hear it again today. But I'm going to give it from a different perspective. Amen. Amen. Because there's really two, two important, maybe more lessons out of this scripture, but really two that jump off the page to, to us, that should jump off the page to us. And we're going to get into that a little bit deeper. Matthew is in the New Testament. It's the first book in the New Testament. Amen? Mm -hmm. So it's after the last book in the Old Testament, which is Malachi. Malachi. And before the second book in the New Testament, which is Mark. Hey, Amen. There's some Bible scholars up in this piece. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about. We got to know our word, y'all. Don't you know that in the scriptures, I'm a, there's just a note, there's extra, but it's worth you all noting, that there's two times, two times that Satan tried to, that we, that we have accounts where Satan personally 
tried to trip up people. The first time was with Eve, where he tried to discredit or, or bring in doubt of God's inspired word. If you remember the story with Eve, he tells her, she says, oh no, we can't go in that garden. I can't, I can't eat the fruit of that tree. I can't even touch it. And then he said, surely God didn't say that you would do this. God knows that on the day you eat of the fruit, you're going to be like him. And because she had that in her heart, wanting to be like God, she partake of, of it and then became a stumbling block to her, her man, Adam, and gave him some. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's important that we understand. That was the first time. The second time, he went to Jesus himself, which is the word incarnate. We know that from John chapter 1, where it says, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus Amen. is the word. And he went to Jesus, and we know he tried to tempt him three times. And every time Jesus had to come back, Jesus could have just said, because Jesus was 100% God, as the Son of God, and 100% man, the Son of Man. But Jesus didn't fall back on his godly, he fought back on the Word and came back. So when Satan came at him, he came back with the Word. And then after the third, he said, leave me. And because Satan knew, this is the creator of all I, be I better fall back. Mm -hmm. Wait till another day. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's important that we know the word. It's important that we understand and study up our word so that we would show ourselves approved and that we come into a greater knowledge of God and equip ourselves from the enemy. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Matthew chapter 14, we're going to start it. Hold on. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to start at verse 22. But let me give you a little bit of context. This is where Jesus had just fed the 5,000. Now, what really, when it says Jesus feeding the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish, really there was probably more than 15,000 people because they just count the 5,000 men. But it says even in the scripture, that there were women and children with them. So even if you assume that there was just one woman and one child, then you're talking about 15,000 people that were fed with five loaves of bread and two fish. Mm. So you, you can see the magnitude of that, of that miracle, of that blessing. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then um, we know that after that, Jesus, we get into Jesus, uh, the, 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 the scripture that we're going to talk about today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So before I get into it, let me pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before your throne just giving thanks for the, your word, which truly is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. We thank you that your word would go forth with power, with precision, and with your purpose, that folks would leave here one uh, um, refreshed, renewed, and, 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 and um, revived, Father Lord, that we would be forever changed and transformed, leaving better than what we came in. Father, that we would let your word, which is forever settled in heaven, settle in our hearts, that, it, that we might be able to say, thy commandments will we keep in our heart that we may not sin against thee. So Father, we just pray that you continue to illuminate us, that you would bring your word, which we know is knowledge and understanding. We're praying for wisdom. Father, for your word says if we desire wisdom, all we need to do is ask, and you would give it to us generously without finding fault. So, Father, we all ask right now, let your wisdom rain down on us. Let your Holy Spirit rain down on us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. And may you be forever praised, exalted, and glorified from now until the end of the age in the mighty and precious name of our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Jesus walks on water. Immediately, so this is after the, 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 the 5,000, uh, uh, feeding the 5,000. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside to pray by himself to, by himself to pray. Later that night, 
he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. Look at your neighbor and say, take courage. Take courage. Take courage. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. I like what the King James says. Bid you come. Bid I come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Mm -hmm. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let them... The sick touched the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. May God add a blessing to the reading of his immutable, his infallible, and his inerrant word. Amen. 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 So let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Amen. Because I think it's important to understand that we're in times right now where folks are wondering what's going to happen from day to day. Are we going to start school? Are we not going to start school? Are businesses going to be back? What's going to happen to the small business? What's happening in the hospitals? Sister Bonnie, I know that's changing on a regular basis. Are we going to have enough equipment and masks and things to protect us from day to day? There's so much chaos and confusion and so much uncertainty that people are trying to hold on to anything that they know is definite or secure or their place of comfort, if you will. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We're trying to stay in that place of comfort. Nobody wants to take a, a risk during times like this because, and I understand, I understand because we, you know, we wanted to do something. We were getting, you know, feeling a little confined and everything in the house and wanted to plan a trip to California. You know, I haven't seen, I've been there in a while and well, you know, I like to go and at least, you know, sit next to my dad's funeral site every once in a while. Grave site. Grave site. Grave site. Mm -hmm. excuse, excuse me. Grave site, yes. Mm -hmm. um, his grave site, mm -hmm. his, his tomb, and um, see relatives and family and things like that. But it seems like the minute we made book those tickets, California went, <laughs> went <laughs> I'll, I'll say oh, left. Oh, you know, the numbers of COVID started taking over, getting worse and worse. And progress that they had made early on, they were now starting to fall back, and so much so that the restaurants were starting to close again. And you know when I go to California, I have to have my Mexican food. Lord, and my Benihana's and all that good. So, so it just didn't make sense. But I do understand, you know, so this uh, people you know, don't want to go out. Some people have a greater level of fear. Some people have a greater level of fear than others. Some people are, are latent in fear. So I want to give you the context because this story, I think, relates a lot to the things that we're going on today. Amen? What I want to tell you, talk about to you about, and one of the main messages in this story is get out the boat. Get out the boat. What do I mean by get out the boat? Amen. As we as we mentioned in, in, the, in this story, Jesus um, made his disciples go, and we know Jesus went out to pray like he did quite often. Mm -hmm. He went to pray. Jesus spent most of his time praying so that in those moments he was doing miracles. 
Amen. I know when we read the scriptures, it seems like he was making miracles all the time, but God had already shown him and told him what was going to happen and where he needed to go and everything in those moments of prayer. Amen. And that's why he was always seeking God's face. That's why he was always going to that place early in the morning. He was intentional with his prayer. You know, he'd leave the crowd, go on, hey, Jesus, there's this party up. Got to go, huh? Pray. Amen? Amen. You see, sometimes we got we to gotta just put the distractions aside. We got to put those things that keep us from doing the most beneficial thing, the most edifying thing, so that we can continue to grow, so that we continue to be in the presence of God, so that we can be covered by his blessings and his anointing. Amen? Amen. Clothed in his love. Amen. In his righteousness. Amen? Amen. 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 But, you know, in this story, Jesus tells his disciples to go on. Uh, yeah, you know, so I imagine as I read the scriptures, it was like becoming evening. And maybe he just, the word doesn't tell us why he sent them out immediately, but they were to go. Mm -hmm. And he went to pray, and we know he prayed for hours or some time because the scriptures tell us that when he finished, by that time, the boat was way offshore. You know, so, um, but we know that it was, a, it was a windy night because it tells us that the, the ship was buffeted. That means that, you know, the waves were pounding on, on, on this. So this, what they're calling Lake Gennesaret is really the Galilean Sea. They're, mm. Those are the two names for it. Amen? Amen. And just to give you some context, what would happen oftentimes is the wind would come over the Syrian mountains from the east and onto the sea and lake. And oftentimes storms would come you know, out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I think about the times where I swam in the in that the Sea of Galilee and mm -hmm. where we could, went on a boat out on the Sea of Galilee and it just brings the scriptures to life as to what happened and seeing the mountains to the to the to the east. Amen. But the boat said the boat said it was a considerable distance off the land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. And then shortly before dawn, so we know some time has elapsed now, because from evening the next day, now we're shortly before dawn. So we're probably talking about potentially twelve or so hours trickle, you know, passing. But it says shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. So obviously this is something that we've never heard in scripture to this point, in the Bible to this point, of anybody walking on water. So this was a new thing. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say a new thing. A new thing. A new thing. A new Amen. thing. Because God is calling his people to do a new thing. Amen. There's some unconventional, an unconventional That's thing. It. He's asking us to step out. The world's not going to be used to the things that That's God right. is calling his people to do. They're going to say, no, you can't do that. Yeah. No, you know, the haters, the doubters, the, the, the perpetrators, I, whatever you want to call them. The backstabbers. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. That's right, Sister Teresa. I know you know. <laughs> They're going to tell you no. You know, we, we say in a, in a, in a song with Anthony um, Brown or whatever, you know, I got the B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. -T right. Got no reason to fear. I got Jesus on my side. Yeah. I got that. People always asking why I'm always... When they, they, they don't know. They don't understand when you're walking in the goodness of God exactly. and the grace of God, why you have this boldness, why you have this great. That's why it. you're thinking things that are higher here when Come you know, on, they're man. operating in fear and they don't want to get out the get out the boat. Come on. Amen. Bring it. They want to stay in their place of comfort. That's it. They, they, they don't want to, you know, stretch. They don't want to do anything that's and, and and as a result, we stay stagnant. Yeah. And if you're staying stagnant, that means you're falling behind. Amen. Because everything must change. Yes, sir. If you don't, if you don't believe Jesus, that, that saying, knowing that everything is, is, is going to change, then you just listen to Stevie Wonder. Right? <laughs> Amen. Huh? We know that Jesus is the highest word. But Stevie Wonder said that years ago, didn't he? Yeah. Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Amen. 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 Things are going right. to change. So if we're staying stagnant, we're getting left behind you just go out and buy your iphone 8 and tell me if they tell me how it's working for you now i have an iphone 8s you know I got the S, so i'm feeling like i'm extra right I got, I got. but the three the three months after that was the new thing and that was that was the old thing right you know what i'm saying there was something
something, there was something a new one, a nine, and you know, and nine went to ten pretty quick. I don't even remember 11. ten to be quite honest, but I know we're at eleven now, yeah. and I'm sure eleven's gonna be outdated in a minute. You just close your eyes and hold your breath. You That's see, right. if you stay in skills, then you fall in behind because things are always moving, things are always advancing, things are always progressing. That's right. Amen. Tell it. So. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went up walking on the lake. When the disciples saw, so they didn't see, know whether it was him. They saw sort of an effigy, I imagine. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody walking on the water. And so I'm like, you know, you're in the morning. I'm sure they were tired. Because, you know, now who's going to get some sleep? Out on the ocean with no boats. They're, they're not, it's not like the love boat. It's just some ship that's walking around now, you know. We're talking about boats that are a little smaller for fishermen, and they could fit the 12 people, but... Now these waves are on it, you know. I'm trying to, I'm up trying to make sure we're gonna be okay. Nobody's getting a good night's sleep out in that, right? So they're probably tired, hungry, wondering when they're gonna get to the other side. And if that wasn't enough, now this figure in the middle of the morning before the sun comes up, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Sister Bonnie, they were like. Oh my goodness! Is that, a, is that what I think it is? Wait, Mackenzie, look at that. What do you see? You know, checking with one another, the twelve disciples, or what have you. What's that? Is that a man? Is that is that the Lord? So the good in the word says that they were, they became afraid. It's a ghost. You know what I thought of? I don't know. Some of y'all, this might be, you might be a little too, uh, yeah. too, too young, you know, for it. But we used to have this cartoon, Casper. Mm -hmm. Casper's a friendly ghost. They used to always say, it's a ghost. Right? Anybody remember Casper? Am I the only one? Right? Okay, Casper. Yeah, Casper's a friendly ghost. The friendliest ghost you know. Y'all remember the song? Amen. That's what I thought of. It's a ghost. And they said, and they cried out in fear. Well, we know fear is the opposite of faith. faith that's Amen? Right. Amen. Fear is the opposite of faith. So if you're not going, if you're operating in fear, then that means and fear is a byproduct of sin mm -hmm. that came into the world. Fear and doubt. Mm -hmm. They came about as a result of sin. And why do we know that? Because one of the first things that God asked Adam, as Adam and Eve were hiding in the garden, Mm -hmm. And it said that they got mm -hmm. fig leaves and tried to cover themselves. So when we sin, the natural tendency of a man or a or woman is to cover up. Mm -hmm. But what we should be doing is confessing mm -hmm. and asking for forgiveness. Amen. 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 So God can cover Amen. us again. Right. Amen. Y'all yeah. feel me? Yes. Yeah. You feel me? You yeah. see, instead of the cover up, which we know all as well, because we get to see it in our in our government, we get to see it in every in our businesses, we get to see it in our, our jobs, we can sometimes in our homes. Lord, <laughs> cover up the cover up, but we should confess so God can cover us again. Amen. 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 But the word goes on to tell us. Amen. This page changed without the, it's the wind. The wind. Yeah. See. The wind was buffeting my Bible. <laughs> the Lord, if it is you. Uh, so Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. You see something, you know, I, 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 to me, I know the words and sometimes there's a transliteration in the Bible of the words and everything that we're doing. But Jesus said, take courage. You see, courage, that's, a, that's an active, that's an aggressive, that's an assertive action. That courage is there for the taking. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not a passive act that you mm -hmm. sit back and hope some pumps up in your heart so that you can do something. No. He said, take courage. So we got to remember that as God's people, God has called us to be bold. Yeah. God has given us a dominion authority on the okay. earth. That he said he would make our enemies a footstool for our feet. That yeah, we've been yeah, given dominion yeah, authority yeah. to trample on scorpions yes, and Lord. stakes yes, and Lord. things like that. Amen? Amen. Amen. But why do we walk so timid? Why do we operate in such fear? We were 
aren't given a spirit of fear. We're given a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Amen. 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 Walk in your boldness. Amen. Take courage. That's right. That's what I'm trying to tell somebody here this morning. Yes, Take Lord. courage. It is I, Jesus said. And then he says, don't be afraid. Mm. Don't be scared. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't be scared. <laughs> my, sister, my sister, don't be scared. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't be scared. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. This is the, this is it, brother. <laughs> This isn't for the timid. This isn't for the weak of heart. Mm -hmm. You gotta be. You gotta be bold. You gotta take courage. You can't be scared. Amen. Don't be afraid. So then Peter, you have to remember, there's at least all of the disciples, which were twelve, mm -hmm. on the boat. But the Bible, this story, only tells us that one. Now I know you're some mathematicians in the in the, in, in the house, right? One out of 12, 8%, that's less than 10%. One out of 12 stepped out, saw what Jesus was doing, knew it was something new, knew it was something supernatural, knew it was something they had never seen before, knew something great was happening, that there was a time such as this. And he said, Lord, if it's you, bid I come. And what did Jesus say? Come. 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 Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on. Bid I come. You see? Peter stepped out and said, Bid I come to you on the water. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine Peter getting out the boat. All right, getting out the boat. I'm going to get out the boat and come, come down and into the water, right? Okay, I'm going to get back up here. But, you know, I know they want me on camera. But we're getting out the boat, climbing down, and getting in the water. So now I'm in the water, right? Can, can you come here, my brother? Tell me your name. Yeah, I'm going to use you. You're gonna, we're going to make you a superstar overnight. Amen. Yeah. No, you, guess what? You get to be Jesus. <laughs> Tell me that's not love. <laughs> so Peter gets out the boat and he's and he's walking, you know, on, on water. George, there's, there's a new thing. Right? There's, there's a new thing. So I'm sure there's a little bit of uncertainty, but he's walking towards Jesus, and I'm sure Jesus is walking towards him, right? Right? But then but then it says the, the waves kicked up. You know, it says he saw the wind. Peter got down off the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, well, we never see the wind. What we see is the evidence of the wind blowing the leaves and blowing the things around us. But nobody sees the wind itself, right? So really what they're talking about is he saw the waves and everything kicking up and what have you. So now... I'm walking towards Jesus. Oh, Jesus! Oh, yes, I'm walking towards Jesus, right? And as I'm walking towards Jesus, the wind starts kicking up and everything. And as I, I know that as long as I keep my eyes fixed on Jesus, everything's going to be all right. But, but, now, some natural things are starting to happen. Uh, the bills are getting too high. Come on. Oh, come on now. Come on, come on. I have a, a loved one that's sick and whatever. Oh, come on now. The boss at work has skipped over me for another promotion. Amen. Oh, come on now. And while he did that, threw some more work on my desk. Amen. Amen. COVID-19 came. Oh, Lord. Now we've got, we got to stay home. Some, some things are starting to happen. See, this wind of calamity is starting to kick up. Right? <laughs> you know, so Jesus, now I'm starting to look, look around like, oh, Lord, call the police. Yeah, <laughs> looking for help. Right? <laughs> Jesus, oh, Lord, what, what's going on? All these things are, are going around. Don't call the police. Mistake. At any rate, at any rate, you know, things are kicking up, and Peter takes his eyes off Jesus and allows doubt and fear yes. to come in. Yes, yes. And, it's, and, and the word tells us when doubt and fear came in, then Peter started to sink. 
That's it. That's see? it. You see what the inferences made, Jesus? I thought you were you a good Jesus, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let the truth be known. Kenneth mm -hmm. Burt Brown's hair of lamb's wool. Amen. Amen. I believe Jesus looked a lot like Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. Go fast yeah, Burt Brown's is darker than me. My friend, my, I try to tell my family that I'm chocolate. But they say I'm caramel. This is chocolate. Yeah. This is chocolate. And that's only in the summer. I, could, I, I get a, a toasty butterscotch in the winter. <laughs> I'm like, why y'all hating on me? I'm chocolate. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to bring this home. So come, he said, he said, come, he said, then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and brought and, 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 and grabbed him by the hand and said, O oh, ye of little faith, O oh, ye of little faith, he said, why? Did you doubt? So the inference that's made is if you didn't let fear come in mm -hmm. and you didn't let doubt doubt enter in, then you would have had, you wouldn't have sunk. That's it. You see, it was only through the fear and the doubt that he would have allowed the that he would have allowed he almost lost his life. That's right. That's through right. Fear and doubt. Yep. Amen. 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 If Jesus wasn't there to lift out his hand and pull him back in, then Peter could potentially drown. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So he went from a place, and this is what I want you to focus on, because we're that's what the, the next message, the next part of this is. As long as the eyes were fixed on Jesus, it was good. Amen. It was only when he took his eyes off Jesus and had his mind fixed on everything around him, the calamity. Mm -hmm. The same calamities that we have in this, it's, it's just not waves. Mm -hmm. It's a wave of stuff that overwhelms us. Yes. Bills. Mm -hmm. Health problems. And a multitude of other things. Our children. Things mm -hmm. happening with our children. Mm -hmm. Things that keep us up at night worrying. Too much work or whatever, not enough supplies. Mm -hmm. Worrying whether you're going to bring something back to your to your family. All of those things can consume us and when they get, we get consumed by them, we take our eyes off Jesus. Mm. So the second part and the important part of this message that I want to bring to you is focusing, keeping your eyes fixed and focusing on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now let me tell you about focus, because I had to think back to some times in my life where I needed some extreme focus. Some extreme focus. And the one that went to the top, I mean, there were focuses. I, there was times where I focused when I was getting a new job and had a tall task to do. But when I thought back about the thing in the time of my life where I was the most focused, I believe, it was when I was about to be a father for the first time mm. to my baby Pilar. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. That was my baby, my firstborn. Mm. As they, Jacob would have said, the, the child of his strength. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 And the reason why I was focused, I realized, my focus, of the, because the focus, first of all, is uh, the, the center of interest or activity, or as a verb, it's particular attention or concentration, extreme concentration on a thing. Focus. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. And when I thought about why it was as a father, I was going to be a father, I was wondering whether I was ready. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew all the things my dad had done, I had an idea of the money my dad was making. I was like, I'm not making 
I'm not making a thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Broke. <laughs> Bro, I, 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 my Eva, I would have been out like, <laughs> brother didn't have, didn't have my job. I, just, I was still in grad school, about to graduate that semester. My wife was um, getting her PhD, and she was working at the time. So, uh, and we were about to have, but she's pregnant at this point, right? Mm -hmm. about to, yeah, about that. We about to have a baby, and I was wondering, am I ready? And that ready, I'll be honest with you, brought fear mm -hmm. and doubt. Mm -hmm. But I had to call upon the Lord and take courage. Mm -hmm. Take courage. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I realized that there was going to be a life coming into the world that depended on my wife and myself as I had depended on my mother and father for all those years. And what was that going to look like? I could not let this baby down. So whatever I had to do, whatever I had to do, it was going to be done. You know, work at McDonald's, yeah, well, with the NBA, that might have been a slap in the face, but you know what? You would have done. You did. Hey, and we did. You humble yourself That's and you right. do what you have to do. That's right. You have to for your family and your children. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Some of us walking around like we too good to pick up trash. If we're picking up trash pays the bills. Do it. Yeah, and you do what you have to do. If picking up trash is going to put food in your baby's mouth, then you do it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that was my first bit, wondering if I was ready. And then trying to comprehend the weight of someone being completely dependent on me. Mm -hmm. That brought fear and doubt. Mm -hmm. But again, I had to take courage. My wife and I would, would plan and say, these are the things we have to thank God we had great parents. Mm -hmm. Amen. That we could buy the cribs and they were excited. <laughs> that they were going to have another grandchild, that they were in a position to be able to help mm -hmm. and take a little bit of that weight off. This is why I'm talking about it's so important for us to have generational wealth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That we're in the position at the end of our lives or as we're progressing to be able to give and to be able to, you know, set that up for the next generation for our children and our children's children. This is what the Bible tells us in terms of an inheritance. This, this, this is what God calls us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then three, trying to remember all the things my dad had done for me. And thinking about how I would manage it. Again, fear and doubt entered into, entered into the equation. And so I, I didn't, I had to take courage. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, as I look back today and I think about how we made it through, I know it was nothing but God. Amen. Amen. Put our parents there to support us, but God ordains that. Mm -hmm. That's right. To have good parents, that's, a, that's not something that we should take for granted. That's right. a blessing. Amen. 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 You know, I think about my sister. You know, how many times have we prayed? And I know you working. Mm -hmm. Get your children through college. Yep. You know, doing it oftentimes by yourself. Yeah. You know, and I just applaud you for your hard work and for right. all that you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. yes, I know how hard it is with two of us. So I can only imagine. And I don't know what help you're getting or any or whatever, but one. I know. It's only out of your love that you could go to work every day, strive and figure out how you're going to do it. I, you know, it's only out of your love that you could do that. Amen. You know, and that's am amazing. The focus, the determination, the resilience yes. that you have to have to carry out that out. But it's focus, focus, focus on God. So. What do we need to do? I want to bring this home. Keeping some keys to staying focused and keeping our eyes on Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. The first thing is we got to make sure that we're spending time with him every day. You can determine how much time, 
But my hope is that it continues to grow. If it's a minute today, then hopefully it will grow to two minutes in the near future. Mm -hmm. If it's 10 minutes, then hopefully, because that will show that he's becoming more of a part and more important in place in your life. Amen. 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 So spending time with him every day, getting up early in the morning like Jesus did and pray. If you don't have a prayer partner, you should seek one out. I'm telling you, we have testimonies in this house of people mm -hmm. when they got prayer partners, their lives changed. Amen. And we're going to talk because there's an accountability. Yeah. And it's good to know that you have somebody that's walking with you, growing with you, doing the things that can check you mm -hmm. and say, look, you know, hey, you got to get back to prayer. Or, hey, no, that's, the Bible says this. And you're studying together and praying together and reading together. Have a prayer partner, someone that holds you accountable. Amen. Amen. So spending time with Christ every day and reading your word. We've already talked about the benefits of reading the word. So spending time with Christ every day. Two. We need to be of those, and this is in 1 Thessalonians, excuse me, chapter 5, verse 18. I, I, like saying, I like saying 16 through 18. The word tells us, rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in every circumstance. So 518, give thanks in every circumstance. When you learn to give thanks to God and you realize that he has had a hand in all of our blessings. My brother Mackenzie's going to grad school. Mm. That's Amen. nothing but God. Amen. 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 I'm so proud of you, brother. Amen. Do your thing. In grad school, job opening up, he's doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know, I, I, I think about my babies, you know, in, in, in their grad school programs and everything. Praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. But most importantly to me is they're growing in the Lord. Amen. Yeah. That's first. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. I thought right. everything else would be all right if they got that foundation. That's right. Amen. That's first. Yep, but give thanks in every situation. See, we need to have an attitude of gratitude. An attitude of gratitude. See, an attitude of gratitude keeps you focused on God and loving him more and more. Mm -hmm. And when you, we want to spend time with people we love. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 I, I know I do. Although sometimes, sister girl, say I don't spend enough time. <laughs> Lord, and I'm trying, baby. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm putting those other things behind. <laughs> I can spend more time with you. Those walks. Those ice cream dates. <laughs> Amen. 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 Focus on the things that are eternal. Not temporal. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is not seen or unseen. Since what is seen is temporary. Mm -hmm. See, this stuff is temporary. Temporary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> temporary. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't go. What is what, what do we say? There's no U-Haul going to heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Take it with you. This stuff's temporary. That's right. Amen. 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 But what is unseen is eternal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 4:23. Above all else, guard your hearts, for out of it is the wellspring of life. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to draw the connection. If we guard our ear gates, the things that we listen to and, and, hear, and, and hear, and we guide our, our gates, the things that we see in our images, then we guide our thoughts. Out of the, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. The, the mouth can only speak what's in your heart. Your heart. In the Bible, the Bible speaks of your mind and your heart as your heart. Mm -hmm. Right? So your emotions, your thoughts, your conscience, mm -hmm. and all of that derives from your heart. Amen. Amen? Yeah. So when we're talking about, you know, guarding your heart, I need to guard it, first of all, with this word. If I, if I make sure that I'm reading the word and this is staying in my heart, then anytime I get a negative thought, anytime I get some stinking thinking, I can replace it with the word of God. I can say, God, forgive me or whatever. Amen. Thy commandments will I keep in my heart that I may not sin against me. Oh, Lord, your word is forever settled in heaven. I can start quote, quoting scripture. Amen. Amen. And know Amen. that God's turning it around. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And the last one I have for you today is glorify God in everything you do. About that last Amen. Yeah. We said that last week. Yeah. You're right. And I'm going to say it again. <laughs> glorify God in everything you do. Colossians, Colossians 23, 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Amen. 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 So I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters. I want to encourage you. God is calling his people to get out the boat. But getting out the boat, it, will, it can be short-lived unless you keep in your eyes fixed on God. Amen. Amen. It's the keeping your eyes fixed on God that's going to sustain you. It's the keeping your eyes fixed on God that's going to get you to the nether level. It's your God keeping your eyes fixed on God that's going to get you to higher ground. You know what I'm saying? It's your keeping your eyes fixed on God that's going to allow you to walk in the greatness and the destiny that he's ordained for all of us from the foundations of the earth. So I'm just calling you, I encourage you that, hallelujah, let's not be of those that are fearful and timid. I'm telling you to take courage. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you to step out the boat. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you to keep your eyes fixed on God. And when mm -hmm. you do that, hallelujah, you're going to walk in the fullness mm -hmm. of joy. You're going to walk in the fullness of God's strength. And we're going to be the, ha, the ambassadors, his light and salt here on the earth. Mm -hmm. May he be forever praised. Amen. 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 Father, Amen. we just thank you for your word. We pray it has gone forth with power. We pray it was gone forth with your purpose. We pray that folks are going to think about this differently. We are not those that are, that are to be fearful, that have a spirit of fear, but of those that have a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. So, Father, we're going to walk in that. We're going to be bold. I'm talking about audacious. Uh, we we that we're going to dare to do the things that people are too afraid to do. That we're going to do it prudently and in your wisdom, but we're going to do it with your divine you know, the leading for those who are led by the Spirit of God or the children of God. So we just thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you that we would leave here differently than what we came in, and we just give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory that only you are due in the mighty and precious name of our Lord, our Savior. Our King, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Pastor Phil, you, you, you surely um, blessed us today, and we thank you for that. We thank you for God using you mightily. So ACC, it is time to give, and we are so grateful. I want to you know, just say we're so grateful to all of you who continue to give. As you know, this is a, a, a relatively um, new, it's a new thing that God has uh, put on our hearts, to put on our hearts many years ago, and this we're entering our fourth year. We're entering our fourth year. To God be the glory. You know, Pastor Phil does not take um, a salary. We, you know, have been able to really use everything that we're able to get from our very dedicated um, and compassionate and giving congregation, ACC, to be able to advance God's kingdom on earth as it is. So we thank you all so much because of the things that we've been able to do um, couldn't happen without you. And so, and I, I want to just let you know how much we appreciate it. We really do. 
Um, I also want to make sure, and I, I do this every week, because I never want people to feel like their giving is, is, is not appreciated and that, um, you know, we've gotten so comfortable, which we're not there, but we've been able to really do things um, for the community because of, of your generosity. So thank you, Kurt Schroeder. Thank you, Daphne Chu. Thank you, Calvin and Kareem. Thank you, Kim and Jeff. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Whitcomb. Thank, uh, thank you, Brad and Sylvia, who, you know, Sylvia is my, my, one of my best friends. Um, and they continue to sow into this ministry so that we can impact the lives uh, that are in the community. And that's where, uh, outside of uh, the expenses of, the daily expenses of having, you know, music and, and having, um, when we were at BC High and all those little things that you don't know, 85% I would say goes to the community. And we, we could not be um, more pleased without the giving that we have. So thank you. Um, I want to say that I want you all to repeat after me. I know the hour is late. Pastor Phil is on a roll. And that was a good thing and we had communion. But we are very mindful of you all's time. Um, you know, our confession of tithing is if you all could please stand, if you could. We are, we're a relaxed church, but we still like to do things decently and in order. Right? Amen. We want you to be comfortable. Um, definitely comfortable. So, we are cheerfully sowing our seed into ACC in the kingdom of God. As sons and daughters of Abraham, we've been blessed to be a blessing. Therefore, we will sow our seed with expectation that we will reap a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. We recognize that we cannot beat God given no matter how hard we try. Therefore, we will honor the Lord with our wealth and the first fruits of our crops, that our barns will be filled to overflowing and our vats will brim over with new wine. Amen. If you could please, um, I think Mom Eva, uh, you know, has the um, collection box. I will say most of us do give on push pay, and I want to say thank you, you know, ACC folks who are not here because of various reasons, some, you know, allergies, some are recovering, we love you, we're praying for you, um, and we, we do acknowledge that you have continued to sow into the ministry, and we are grateful for that. Um, but we do use push pay. If you are, if you are, um, if you are watching, uh, we ask that you, if you're so led to give, that is, um, that you tune in to our, 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 turn on our website, rather, which is www.awakencc-bos.org um, and click on the gift button. Um, we, we're thankful. Mom Eva, are you are ready? I'm ready to pray. Okay. Wait. Wait. Okay. You want to wait, Stanley? Amen. Lord waits on us. It is a very nice breeze. Amen. Very nice breeze. Amen. God is, is so awesome. He gives us exactly what we need. Sister Rena and I were outside yesterday. We were, you know, thank you to Laura and Ivy and to all of you who signed up or helped with the NAACP um, day of service yesterday. It was an amazing service and it's certainly an extension of all the things that we try to do here at Awaken Christian Church. Mm -hmm. But we were grateful for the shade, weren't we? Weren't we, sister? I tell you, it was, uh, the sun was beaming and we were grateful for that. So. The shade is always a good thing, too, as long as you're not throwing it. Amen? Amen. 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 God be the glory. Amen. You may be seated um, in the presence of the Lord. We want to, um, again, thank you all so much for, for your giving. Um, we also want to, you know, what we always say is we welcome our visitors. We don't put them on blast. Um, but for the rest of you know, the service, we typically would get up just so that we can finish. I ask that you uh, welcome 
our visitor today. We have something for you. We're grateful that you came. We recognize that you could have gone anywhere, but you came here. That was not by accident. That was by divine intervention. It's funny because I kept saying your name yesterday. Oh, and I know your name. Yeah. Sometimes I have a thousand things on my mind. So we, you know, so we think, you know, we just want to say welcome, and ACC will send you a warm um, welcome as soon as I wrap up. But we want you to know what the mission of our church is. It's important that anyone who comes or tunes in knows that the mission of Awakening Christian Church is to awaken people all over the world to the gospel of Jesus Christ, actively transforming lives through love, labor, teaching and preaching of the word, and praise and worship. And in the way in which we do that is obviously with, you know, giving the word of God on Sundays and throughout the week, but also through the ministries that we have. We have powerful ministries. We've got a men's ministry. We've got an Empower Her uh, Ministries, which is, which is awesome. We've got the male and the female where people can talk about things. We also have, you know, focus on four areas, health and wellness, which we've got nurses up in the house. Bonnie is a a nurse, you know, at Mass General. My best friend Tula is at Beth Israel. And so we got, you know, Jasmine, who's a part of this church, is also a pharmacist. And so we have our health and wellness ministry is very powerful. Um, we also focus on education in the community. So it is important that if we are operating in God's love, that we are everything that God blesses us with, that we are sowing into others, especially those that we need. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we also, our Bible um, teaching and Bible preaching show on ourselves approved church. So like Pastor Phil said, we have, um, and we pray, this is a praying church. We're going to have a testimony service one of these days because all the good news is coming. The Amen. cups in the ACC are overflowing. Amen. 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 And so, you know, and that is through the power of prayer. We know that when two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in, in the midst. Amen. And so we have morning prayer on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 5 to 5.30 a.m. Pastor Phil, uh, Lady T, who is the uh, church um, administrator, I, I call her the extraordinary um, administrator. Um, and, and, you know, keep her in your prayers. And um, and then Mackenzie is always on the line. So, you know, continue, you know, that, that's a good way to, to, to stay connected. Uh, Mom Miriam, you know, Mom Miriam and Pastor Phil do not miss a beat on Saturdays. If they have to change the time, they'll change the time. But it's just a great time for us to continue to lift one another up. Because there is, there is strength in, in numbers and in the power of prayer. Amen? And then we have Bible study um, for Tuesdays for men. Because, you know, my husband will remind you he is from L.A. And all his friends, most of his friends are, and family are there. And they created this wonderful men's Bible. He created this wonderful men's Bible study where I tell you it's awesome. And so if you, you know, are interested, we can give you the, in, the information, but they really get into it. I, I disappear, I stay for the first, stay in the kitchen for the first few minutes just because I'm nosy. I want to know what they're talking about. But then I go upstairs because I know that that's their time, and it's, it just seems like such a rich time. We also have Bible study for ACC on every Thursday. Mom Eva, I'm telling you, Sister Teresa, Mom Miriam, you know, Ivy, Mackenzie, you all, you know, you all are, are, are steady at his, you know, Rena, you know, Marlena. We're trying to get back to this, to, you know, when Pastor Phil talks about going back to the basics, it's important that we stay connected in the, in the Lord and in different ways in which we do that. And so we're, God is using us and revealing to us in ways that that can happen. Amen? Amen. And then finally, any other announcements? I know, you know, thank you. Um, I know you're going to talk about the, the class. Um, and then we said we were going to have a, a calendar. Um, I need to uh, run some things by Lady T. And then we will um, post a calendar for the month of August. But we do need to have a leadership team meeting and what it means to serve in ACC and what the vision is for the fall and moving on. You know, I think the main question is, well, you know, when, when, when are we going to go back to um, BC High? And they still have some things as, as a school leader, we don't really know. We have this plan that we're working on, but we don't know. But we're going to have services uh, here for as long as we can until we feel safe enough to go someplace else. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I just wanted to, first of all, thank you all.
coming again this morning. I, I, I know um, my Marion was out, and she's better, getting better every day now. So we thank you. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God for that. Um, and as you mentioned, we're praying for Lady T. She's getting better all the time, so I, we look forward to when she can come back. And, um, praise God. We are, um, just to give you an update, we're having a, a, a class that we're going to be offering. The Lord told me, as I mentioned to you, that we need to get back to the foundations. Because I feel like so many people's foundations were sh shaken in this COVID time. And during the storms, because our foundation is the rock we call Jesus Christ. The word tells us that when the storms came, the water rose, and all of those things in scripture, that it, because it was on the rock, it stood. But those, the sand, the, the, the um, foundation that was on the sand, it crashed down in destruction. So the Lord told me I needed to get back to the foundations because I only see uh, uh, a little more than a handful. And I wonder oftentimes, although I, I do call around and check on the saints, but thank God we still have, a, uh, in a lot of ways, a smaller church. So I know who's here and who's not, and I can call and check on folks, and, you know, and, and, and still say, you good? Just praying for you, thinking about you, love you, you know, and keep it moving. But, um, you know, I, I know that, that it's during this time where God tells us that we shouldn't forego the assembling of the brethren. I need your hug. I need your encouragement. I need all of these things that it, it helps uplift us and keep us having an attitude of thanks and, and not dwelling on our problems because it's very easy to let COVID or any other affliction knock you down and knock you out. You know, so I want to say that. But we're, we're, we're going to be starting a class. Ivy and I are um, going to be finishing the preparation and going through it in the, um, this, this week, I believe. You know, we have, um, you know, she's going to be teaching it with me. And um, to God be the glory. Amen. I'm proud of my, this is my spiritual daughter. Yes, yes, yes. You know. So, um, we'll let you know the schedule. But it'll probably be in the next two two weeks. And then um, somebody asked me, asked me recently. In fact, I think it was I. You know, <laughs> what does it take to be a member? So, I'm going to go through that again as well but like I tell anybody to be a, in, in, in terms of being a member I always say um, it's important that you make sure that you look at a church and evaluate it over a period of time and you want to make sure that the people that are leading it in this case you know Pastor Ingrid and myself that they're living the life just got college you know what I'm saying you don't want folks that are saying one thing and living another. Or you don't want folks that are teaching you some, you know, teaching you the wrong thing. Right. You know, so it's very important that, um, we, that we do that. So I'm going to go on and close this out in prayer if everyone can stand. We will let you know in the next couple of weeks that information. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, glorious and heavenly Father, we just come before you. Just giving thanks for you, for you are everlasting, you are eternal. You are El Olam, our Heavenly Father. And Father, we just give thanks for all that you've done, all that you're doing, all that you will do. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, which guides us, which keeps us. We thank you for your divine protection and your divine provision, which keeps us. And Lord, I just thank you for everyone here under the sound of my voice that they press their way this morning and they're here in health and soundness of mind. For those that have been infirmed, afflicted, we pray, Father, that your healing hand would be upon them. For we know that one touch from the king can change everything. So, Lord, we're believing in faith that you're healing them, that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. And, Father, that we're walking in your strength and in your guidance. So now unto you who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we could ask, think, even imagine, Lord. And to our Lord Jesus, to the, in the church, and to our Lord Jesus Christ. May he be forever praised, may he be forever exalted, may he be forever glorified. From now until the end of the age, 
in the, the mighty and precious name of our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. Look forward to seeing you next week.